Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome all of you back to Thursday, the 27th of May's edition of EastEnders. It's kind of been a little bit, I don't know, kind of like a bit of a slow day in the square. The only real thing of note is of uh, Milo and uh, Keanu's, uh, you know, story about about female circumcision ongoing again. Uh, Mila having to keep uh, Kila as safe as possible. Kila, uh, Mila turning down every offer Ikra gets, Ikra running off. And that's, again, there's been, like, other parts about this episode, and I'm pretty sure they're going to, like, er erase to something, because the only other real sort of, like, story that I felt like was important because it was still ongoing was the one between Suki and somehow trying to cobble some money together and somehow he dis she discovers uh, Kirat uh, going out, well, having dinner with Sharon. Uh, Suki even goes to the length of trying to go to Phil Mitchell to try and launder some money, which it'll be interesting to work, work out exactly sort of like why Suki sort of like needs the money. <laughs> In fact, there was even this hilarious scene where Suki is trying to count the count some money, and she just throws it down and screams at that. And all my dad could say to her is that she can't count. <laughs> oh dear. So the other things aside, uh, oh Sonia is also back on the scene, and Terry Kant is gets his second appear gets his technically his third appearance, and it's just. Sonia and Ter Terry just kind of like talking at points. It's all right. It just it. The thing I don't get about this whole revelation about Sonia's real father is that it just it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. That's probably why they're waiting a whole week to get back from this. Speaking of waiting, uh, Gray makes his appearance again. Uh, he tells Dwayne Kim so like toy boy, I guess you are, and Kim is basically Kim, and also Chelsea apparently arrives back on the scene, telling Kim that Dwayne is a womanizer, more or less. God almighty, just like, this, this, like I said before, this show simultaneously has too many characters and not enough, because I felt as if, like, there was barely anything, almost, nothing really felt like it was going on. Except for, of course, uh, Bobby's terrible dancing. And also, the episode ends again with uh, Mila, re well, them realising that Keanu has gone missing again. Believing that she's gone back to her mother who's planning to send them off to get, you know, circumcised. Oh, and also, the ending also has, if you've been affected by the, by the things shown in this episode. Once again, not even showing a number in this, in this. Which, I'm surprised, generally, they've never been, you know... There have never been complaints to Ofcom about that before because that would still seem like, you know, like I said, issues on that sort of thing. You would sort of like want to have a phone number or, or to get to a crisis team. Bearing in mind, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the thing I said also about, you know, the if they if they decide to do a story on abusive relationships. Imagine, you know, like, like I said again, the code for I want to order a pizza. They say they say that over the phone. That that gets the point down very clearly. You know what I'm saying? So oh god, like I cannot believe there's just absolutely like it feels like nothing else to worth mentioning about. Mick wasn't in the Carders weren't in this episode. Frankie, Zach weren't in this episode. Ben and Callum are still on in this episode. There just there just doesn't seem to be like nothing going on, and uh, also most important of all is that Whitney is still not back yet, despite running Cat over. It's it's surreal, ladies and gentlemen. But I feel as if like just if I was more interested, I probably would. But like I said before, I almost have this hunch that as soon as this whole story or this agenda about Milao is uh, is going to be resolved. They're just going to just cut her out of the show completely. And also, where's Karen in the show as well? I I I prefer Karen. Don't know whatever's happened to her. And there's only like really one more thing of like note, I suppose, is that 
Kathy and Milo have like a conversation earlier saying that, you know, get that down yet. It's literally just water with a bit of lime in it. And they say about, well, isn't Milo meant to be Christian and is it against the Bible and all that? And they literally do not bring up like religion after that. They talk about, you know, Milo and, you know, other members who refuses to be seen as outcast and driven, that sort of thing. And trust me, it's very, very... Any time they try and touch upon religion, ladies and gentlemen, in this show, it's a few very small remarks. It's not really even remarks. It's just saying the Bible or Jesus or stuff like that. And they'll never go near that subject ever again. I don't know whether it's because they can't or they just... If... <sighs> It's, again, I just don't know... What, if you're not going to make a point out of it, then don't mention it at all. I mean, I don't know if this... I mean, obviously, I don't believe EastEnders is trying to make a statement about this, but if they are, they're not really doing the greatest job either because it just seems as if, like, it's very dragged out and it doesn't seem to be, like, nothing's happening. That's the strange thing. It took us nearly two whole episodes just for... This revelation at the end that uh, Kila was uh, gone missing. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is also why I'm going to leave this episode. It's just not really the sort of thing I think I'll return to in a hurry. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I will hope so with you guys again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye for now.